Hello, this is Mr. Bob. Today I'll be reading Elmer by David McKee. There once was a herd of elephants. Elephants young, elephants old, elephants tall and short, fat and thin. All were different, but all were happy and almost all were the same color. All except Elmer. Elmer was not elephant color, he was patchwork. Elmer was yellow, and orange, and red, and pink, and purple, and blue, and green, and black, and white. It was Elmer who kept the other elephants happy. Their games and jokes were always his idea. If an elephant was laughing, the cause was usually Elmer. But Elmer himself wasn't happy. Who ever heard of a patchwork elephant, he thought to himself. No wonder they laugh at me. One morning, just as the others were waking up, Elmer slipped away. As he walked through the jungle, Elmer met other animals. Good morning, Elmer, they said. After a long walk, Elmer found what he was looking for, a large bush covered with elephant-colored berries. Elmer caught hold of the bush and shook it until the berries fell on the ground. Then Elmer lay down and rolled over on the berries, this way and that. He picked up bunches of berries and rubbed himself all over until he was covered with berry juice. When he had finished, there wasn't a sign of any yellow, or orange, or red, or pink, or purple, or blue, or green, or black, or white. Elmer looked like any other elephant. On his way back through the jungle, Elmer passed the other animals. Good morning, elephant. When Elmer rejoined the herd, none of the other elephants noticed him. As he stood there, Elmer felt that something was wrong. But what? He looked around. Same old jungle, same old blue sky, same old rain cloud, same old elephants. The other elephants were standing absolutely still, silent, and serious. Elmer had never seen them so serious before. It made him want to laugh. Finally, he could bear it no longer. He lifted his trunk, and at the top of his voice, he shouted, Boo! The other elephants jumped in surprise. Elmer was helpless with laughter. Then the others began to laugh. They said, too bad Elmer's, Elmer isn't here to share the fun. And they were laughing harder and harder. And then the rain cloud burst. When the rain fell on Elmer, his patchwork started to show again. Oh, Elmer, gasped an old elephant as Elmer was washed back to normal. You've played some good jokes. But this has been the biggest laugh of all. What would we do without you? We must celebrate this day every year, said another elephant. The day of Elmer's best joke. All of us elephants will decorate ourselves in his honor, said a third one. And Elmer will decorate himself elephant color. And one day each year, the elephants color themselves yellow, or orange, or red, or pink, or purple, or blue, or green, or black, or white, and they have a parade. If you happen to see an elephant in the Elmer's Day Parade, who is ordinary elephant color, you will know it must be Elmer. The End
Grumpy Monkey by Suzanne Lang, illustrated by Max Lang. One wonderful day, Jim Pansy woke to discover that nothing was right. The sun was too bright, the sky was too blue, and the bananas were too sweet. Jim was confused. What's going on? He said. Maybe you're grumpy, suggested Norman from next door. I'm not grumpy, Jim insisted. On his walk, he met Marabou. Jim's grumpy, Norman told Marabou. Why are you grumpy, Jim? asked Marabou. It's such a wonderful day. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. But look at how you're standing, Marabou said. It's true, said Norman. You're all hunched. So Jim loosened up. Then he ran into Lemur. Jim's grumpy, Norman told Lemur. Why are you grumpy, Jim? asked Lemur. It's such a wonderful day. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. Your eyebrows look grumpy, said Lemur. It's true, said Norman. They're all bunched up. So Jim raised his brow. Then he tripped over Snake. Oh, no, said Norman. That's the last thing you need when you're feeling so grumpy. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. Then why that frown, said Snake. Oh, I think it's because he tripped over you, Norman whispered to Snake. So Jim put on a smile. Finally, Jim looked happy but he didn't feel happy inside. Everyone wanted Jim to enjoy this wonderful day. You should sing with us, said the birds. Jim didn't feel like singing. You should swing with us, said the monkeys. Jim didn't feel like swinging. You should roll with us, said the zebras. Jim didn't feel like rolling. You should stroll with us, said the peacocks. Jim didn't feel like strolling. You should lie in the grass. You should stomp your feet. You should take a bath. Make a splash. You should hug someone. Hey, you should laugh. You should take a nap. You should eat old meat. Or some honey. You should jump up and down. You should sit in the sun. You should dance. But Jim didn't feel like doing any of that. Why are you grumpy, Jim? asked the others. It's such a wonderful day. I'm not grumpy, shouted Jim as he beat his chest. And he stormed off. Jim felt sorry. A little sorry for shouting at everyone, but mostly sorry for himself. I guess I am grumpy, Jim sighed. And just as he was starting to feel really sad, he came upon Norman. Norman was slumped, his eyebrows were bunched up, and he was frowning. What's the matter? Are you grumpy? asked Jim. No, no, I dance with porcupine, said Norman. Are you okay? asked Jim. It hurts, but I'll probably feel better soon enough, said Norman. Are you still grumpy? Yes, said Jim, but I'll probably feel better soon enough too. For now, I need to be grumpy. It's a wonderful day to be grumpy, said Norman. Jim agreed. And he already felt a little better. The end. Stripe by Joanne Pardis. 
Stripe lived with his mom and dad at the edge of a huge jungle. Never go there by yourself, said his mom. It's very dangerous. One hot afternoon, his mom and dad fell asleep. The jungle looks cool, thought Stripe. Maybe I'll go in there just for a minute. Stripe trotted happily through the trees, getting farther and farther away from home. Just then, he spotted a bee's nest high up in a tree. Honey, Stripe thought excitedly. But as he stretched up to reach the hive, he heard a loud buzzing noise. The bees were angry and chased poor Stripe away right out of the jungle and into the river. Under the water, Stripe was safe from the bees. Cautiously, he swam to the surface and pulled himself onto a log. The bees were gone, but Stripe had a feeling that he was being watched. The river was full of hungry crocodiles. Stripe paddled hard as they chased him down the river and out to sea. Just as the snapping jaws were getting close, Stripe spotted a cave in the distance. It looked like a good place to hide. But the closer he got, the stranger the cave looked. It was not a cave at all. It was a whale's mouth. Inside the whale, it was very cold and dark. Stripe was scared. Then he had an idea. With the tip of his tail, he tickled the top of the whale's mouth. Achoo! The whale sneezed, and Stripe flew high in the air. And then he was falling, falling, falling. Bump! Stripe landed back at home, where his mom and dad were just waking up. I won't go back to the jungle for a long, long time, thought Stripe. And he curled up and went to sleep. The end.